spiritual baptism, these three young men that are coming up here um, have varying testimonies. Uh, same God, same changed heart, looks different. Um, one of them might have just like at that moment, like, boom, I knew, I knew God got a hold of me. Um, others might say it was more of a gradual process. But what we do know is that when God gets a hold of the heart, when God gets a hold of those that he's made in his image, he brings them from death to life. What it says in Romans 6, he says that, that, that we have, um, that we've been, that we've died, we've been buried, and we've been raised with Christ. That if you know Jesus Christ, the, the old is gone and the new is come. That he no longer calls you sinner, he calls you saint. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It means we continue to sin. But we're saints, that our sin has been forgiven as far as the east is from the west. So we're going to invite up um, three different Johnson boys, which is super exciting for this special family. And it's super exciting for our church because we've known this family for a long, long time. And I don't want to interfere with um, God's call for these men to be baptized. But God also gave a gift to the Johnson family um, 20 years ago. And that gift came in the name of the first young man that's going to be baptized. His name is Isaiah. Elijah. 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 Who is it? Elijah. Elijah. Come up here, Elijah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you after looking at your brother, and you got way too many like, sound, similar sounding names. But Elijah, 20 years ago, um, mm. was born. So what did it actually say? Had to go, <laughs> can we do that in church before we baptize him? Let's do it. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elijah. Happy birthday to you. So we're going to start Elijah telling his story. Hi, everybody. Thank you for singing for me. Um, <laughs> it didn't sound too bad, so it's also really good. Um, so, as you know, my name is Elijah Johnson. I am the oldest of four boys, and most everyone here probably knows my parents, Greg and Will. Um, and oh, it's, it's been such an interesting road to this day and to this year of my life. But um, to start out, I just want to I hope that my story shows a victory over darkness, but not on my own intuition, but through God's work through me, because oh, if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I'd be. So to start out, um, I, I knew I met Christ and slowly started to accept him from eighth grade on. But before that, I was diagnosed with a rare cancer genetic disposition, which just a lot of words for saying, I'll probably get cancer one day in my life. Um, my mom's had multiple cancers, and she has the same genetic disposition, and so did my brother Simon. And this has led me to be very, very anxious about my health, my mom's, and especially my big brother Simon's, because, I don't know, well, thinking about him getting sick sounds very, very terrifying. Um, so at, for a very long time in middle school, I was anxious, um, and I was putting myself above others. And I um, was doing this out of self-preservation and selfish just nature and sinful nature to keep myself safe and prevent the hurt that this genetic disease could cause. Um, and I would put myself above others, I would demean others just for the sake of my own reassurance, for the sake of my um, well-being. And I eventually realized when I was on eighth grade backpacking trip actually through this church in Mountain View Community Church that God's dominion over my life diminishes my fears without me needing to worry. Um, I realized that he has provided everything that I need completely through my life and that I don't have anything that I have now without him. Um, and I knew that I must accept Christ and put him first to live like him and to treat others as he loves me because that is how he has called me despite my anxieties and my concerns around my brother's health or my mother's or mine. Um, and on top of that, my after I came back from my eighth grade trip, um, I started getting really serious in the flute lessons. Um, I'm pretty 
big flute player. That was one of my hobbies. And um, I went to lessons every week with my grandma. Um, and she was definitely one of the closest people I've ever seen love like Christ. Um, and I got to spend multiple hours with her every week. Um, and she was incredible. Um, she is definitely one of my favorite people in the world. Um, and she always challenged me to do the same thing um, and let God rule over my life because she knew nothing was better. Um, so I received Christ through the eighth grade trip, catalyzing everything and my grandma and my parents leading me in the same direction that this trip started. And I acknowledged my sin and put Christ first, but only with his help. It was never my own intuition. And then I realized that I actually really love listening to other people's stories. And I love to see how God has shaped them. Um, and for the longest time, I was only concerned about myself and my own life because of all the anxiety I had built up. Um, and then I also gave all my selfish desires over to him, for I know that only he can redeem me and give me the spirit to live for him. So that's where I'm at today. Of course, it's ever-changing and fluctuating, but this um, is my story, and this is how I got to be baptized here today on my birthday. <laughs> So we have a, a tradition after uh, Greg baptizes all three boys coming up. He will say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He will put his son all the way underwater, signifying his son's uh, death, burial and death, and resurrection. After he comes up out of the water, uh, we're going to say this. Um, he's going to say, walk in newness of life. This half of the room from this pillar left is going to say, until the end. This half is going to go forevermore. And so we need to practice this. Now walk in newness of life. Until the end. Forevermore. Until the end. Forevermore. Come on. Until the end. Forevermore. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just have to make sure it's working. It is. All right. Elijah David Johnson. It is our pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Elijah, now walk in newness of life. Until the end! Before I was saved by Christ, I had a lot of obsessions. I was really focused on making myself happy, and I was making a lot of selfish decisions. And these selfish decisions led to me, uh, led me to make mistakes in my life. And I still felt like there was something missing, that my life wasn't complete. Then the Holy Spirit convinced me to try something new in my life. In my eighth grade year, I was homeschooled. Homeschooling helped me realize there's a lot more to life than just myself. That year, I started focusing more on God and taking my faith more seriously. Now I realize that once I was once dead in my sins, and now I'm saved through God's grace. That is why I'm here today to be baptized and express my, fa uh, my faith to the church family. Thank you. Right into it like it's an ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> 
My name is Simon Johnson, and I have three older brothers. Uh, they have been very good to me, and my testimony is very similar to his as. In the past few years, I have had new obsessions that demanded my time. To say these obsessions didn't control me would be a lie. I've come to show that, that God has helped me think about how I spend my time and how life is not all about me. I want to bury these addictions to my own pleasure with physical baptism and spiritual baptism. I have known Christ since I could walk, but it was my choice to follow him or not. In sixth grade, I cleared my mind and God placed thoughts in my head about my purpose on this earth and why he created me. When plans didn't go the way I wanted them to, I felt like a piece of me was missing. I started comparing myself to others and often complaining to my parents that they somehow cheated me, ultimately, ultimately leading to disappointment. I always wanted more, and the Holy Spirit helped me recognize this as vanity. Before I accepted Christ, trials were my kryptonite. I would give in, complain, and throw a fit. Now I realize that even though I may not in the moment, God is helping me in not trying to hurt me or crush my spirit. So I've come to no longer live in the sin that I have died in, but I know I can't do it alone. That is why I thank God for my wonderful parents and brothers who let me grow up with this church and the good way. <laughs> Simon Dale Johnson. It is our tremendous joy and pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, Simon, walk in newness of life. Until the end! Johnson family, love you guys. So grateful you are a good God. Um, we're going to start our second service in about probably 10 minutes, start a little bit late. So if you are here for the first service, um, grab a coffee and get out of here. <laughs> uh, we love you, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah.